out our volcano notes here while we go along. So what is a volcano? We talked about this the other day, and that is an opening in the earth, and what erupts out of it is gases, ash, and lava. Volcanic mountains form when you have a buildup of layers. So what happens is you have an explosion, you get layers of lava, ash, and other materials. There are over 600 active volcanoes in the world now. Where are some of them? Well, we have the most active volcano in the world in Hawaii, the Kilauea. In Iceland, we have many active volcanoes. When we are doing our map activity, you'll notice that um, Iceland falls right in the middle of the Atlantic, and that's where we have a mid-Atlantic ridge, and there's all kinds of um, volcanoes that are right in that area. Also, we have the largest recent eruption um, was the Shepherd Hills volcano, killing about 20 people at that time. So what are some of the effects of an eruption? First, the lava flow can directly affect people and property. Lava flow destroys everything that's in its path, and so anything it touches is going to be destroyed, either um, caught on fire or just completely over, taken over. Um, there are t uh, one of the types of flows are called pyroglastic flows, and this is when the volcanic ash comes down the s side with such force that the side of the volcano is actually taken out. When we did our interactive volcano lab, um, you were able to see what those look like. They come down with such speed and with such heat that it ignites the wood that it touches. Falling ash can also destroy buildings, black roads, can cause disease, respiratory disease, can disrupt travel like the one that went off in um, Iceland in 2010. And what it did was it, the ashes got into the um, flow, the um, wind stream, and actually stopped um, air traffic through um, Europe for three weeks. More effects is that the um, sulfuric uh, gases that are given off from the volcanic eruption can then interact with um, water and can, and can cause hydro, hydro, um, hydro, sulfuric acid to be formed. And this can be in the rain and in the clouds, and we get that acid rain. This can destroy vegetation. It can get into lakes and streams and affect the pH system of that and cause di disruptions in the ecosystem. It can cause disruption in the pH of soil, thus also causing um, disruptions in those ecosystems. So how do they form? Volcanoes form from the magma that's formed deep within the earth. This magma um, is actually initially created by the radioactive decay and the gravity that causes the heat that can form these. And this heat, when you form it, um, can then slowly be forced to the surface because it's less dense than the rocks around it. And um, when it gets to the surface in an opening or, or a vent, it starts to um, come out and starts to build up these volcanoes. Where do they occur? occur? They occur on diverging boundaries where they come apart. The rifts form here, allowing magma to flow upward, cooling and hardening, and um, it goes into creating a volcano. They can occur at hot spots. This is um, unusually hot areas between the Earth's mantle and the core, and it's find its way to the surface as these plates slowly move over top of them, and the weak plates then cause allow the uh, magma to come up. That's how the Hawaiian Islands were formed. They can also be formed at convergent boundaries, where boundaries come together, but they have to be at subduction zones. These tend to have violent eruptions because um, subduction zones usually involve water or always involve um, an ocean plate. And when you have an ocean or water at these boundaries, the hydrogen um, there causes them to be much more volatile. So what controls the eruptions? The trapped gas in the magma. So in quiet eruptions, you have the gases escape very easily and very slowly, kind of like when you just slowly open up your top bo pop bottle cap from your pop. Explosive eruptions are when those gases build up and they all come out at, at one time, like shaking your bottle of pop and then opening it very quickly and everything comes out. Water vapor and magma at boundaries like oceanic plates are trapped vapor can cause exp um, explosive, explosive eruptions also. So that's why those convergent plates um, where those volcanoes are created at convergent plates can cause much more violent eruptions. 
There, remember we talked before about them being three different types of igneous rock, um, um, and they were formed because of the type of magma. Remember BAG, balsetic, andesitic, and granitic? Those are the types of magma that can produce these, be, come out of these different volcanoes. The balsetic um, magma is low in silica. There's quiet eruptions, has a very slow lava flow, and it comes down like there's ropes being thrown down on the side of the mountain. They're very fluid, so trap gases escape very easily and slowly. That's why they're quiet eruptions. And they're usually in hot spots in some rifts areas. So we know that's balsetic. Now, BAG. Next is anesthetic magma. They have a moderate amount of silica in it. They occur at convergent boundaries, such as the Andes Mountains. They're the largest eruption in history was the anesthetic Gratuic, um volcanic eruption. So these can, because they're at convergent boundaries, have much more have more violent eruptions. Grancetic are very silico-rich composite or stratovolcanoes. They can um, be very explosive. They're sometimes formed at subduction zones. And they're forced upward by denser rocks, picking up silicate at the crust. And the gases expand rapidly. Pieces of lava spew in the air very violently. So these three different types of volcanoes and their eruptions have to do with the types of magma that in them. They're in them. Now remember, if we go back to when we were talking about rocks, these also form three different types of igneous rocks based on the type of magma that comes out. There are three forms of volcanoes. Um, now these three forms, remember, there were our vocabulary words last week, three forms of um, volcanoes. Number one is your shield volcano. These are balsetic lava, can flow through cracks, quiet eruptions, nice gentle slopes. Hawaiian Islands, much of these new, new floor, sea floor formed this way. All right. And remember, the Hawaiian Islands are on those hot spots, and so they do come out very slowly. We have next have our cinder volcano. This is explosive eruptions. Tephra goes spewing up in the air and falls right back down, so it gives us these steep-sided, loosely packed from the tephra. And um, an example of this is the par paracutin in the Mexican farm fields. They come up very rapidly because they're explosive. One more volcano can, can be formed in what we call um, composite volcanoes, and they vary. They go between quiet and explosive eruptions, and so they kind of layer them that way, and they're a composite of those. And the, they usually confer, come at convergent plates where we have subduction zones, and it has layers of tephra and layers of lava. And the, what type of explosion it's going to have depends on the amount of trap gas and the amount of silica in there. So those types of magma that we talked about and the amount of silica is also going to contribute to whether it's a violent, a quiet, or an explosive eruption. Um, intrusive igneous rocks, much of this activity is underground, so um, the baffolets are the largest igneous rock bodies. Some exposed by erosion are in the Yosemite National Parks. We can have dikes. This is where magma is forced into cracks of the rock below the surface and it starts to harden. And then we have sills where it creeps up into the cracks parallel to the rock layers that look like window sills. You know, they're horizontal to the um, um, earth. There's like um, window sills are horizontal. So those are igneous rock structures, and that's intrusive igneous rock structures that can form. Intrusive igneous rocks after an eruption, you can get what's called the volcanic neck, and this is when the eruption stops and then the vent hardens and erodes away. Calderas is when the top of your volcano collapses, producing a large depression, and, the, and then we can have lakes form on top of them. So when that magma chamber in the middle that has helped create that volcano becomes empty, it becomes hollow in the middle, and so the, the crater around it can correct, collapse, and um, that can create what's called the caldera. And we can get um, green space over top of it. We can get um, craters that form lakes there over to where those were, were also. So those are all our volcano notes and we will next be going into earthquakes. So we'll, we will have some audio notes of those also when we get to that part of it.